So this is my 2022 gaming setup. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're gonna start off with is these two desks right here. Pretty simple black desk with two drawers on them. They're actually exactly the same. So there are two drawers down there and an extra little shelf. But I removed the drawers and ended up putting the subwoofer for these two speakers down there and an Xbox 360E and a little shelf thing. So that's why it's a controller and the connect sensor. So making our way to the right of the room, this is where we're gonna probably start with the actual tech stuff. And we got a shelf, we got some exploding kittens up there, all right? Some little, you know, Minecraft things, Amiibos, Star Wars stuff, Pac-Man, all that. And we got the two signs, little light up Star Wars logo and game over thing. Got the Mario Maker 2 sketchbook. We got the Unify, Unify Dream Machine Pro. It's, you know, acronym UDM Pro. It is a really overkill router, basically. It is 10 gigabit capable and yeah, I've got all my stuff wired into it. It goes into a gigabit switch over there, which does PoE and everything for the access points in the house. So we've got eight ports there, eight ports here. And I'm using all of them pretty much. So might need to expand that a bit. Down below it is the Synology DS1821 Plus network attached storage device. It's got eight hard drives in it, totaling about 25 terabytes of storage. I'm hoping to expand it. Only four of them are actual real capacity drives. The rest are just random drives from old computers. Nothing too special. They've got some external ones there that don't leave anything on, but you know, why not leave them connected, right? Over here are the two UPSs. You may have seen these before. Displays automatically power off, but yeah, you can see a current power draw and estimated runtime if you want, stuff like that. Yeah, we've got the 1200 AU and the 1600 AU. So, so they're different units, but they have the same casing and design and features. They just have different capacities of runtime and stuff like that. Moving on to over here now, let's start with this drawer, which is just a bunch of streaming gear. So I've got the Rode Wireless Go 2 mic set. There's actually two mics it comes with. One of them I'm using now, which has a lav mic connected, and this one as well, which is a just, I just have nothing connected. It's just a built-in mic with a little windshield on it. It's really good for VR stuff and you know the kitchen streams I like to do occasionally. Yeah I really do recommend them. They're really nice, really simple and the receiver just connects right here. There's a little screen on it. You can see my little audio going through right there. Oh, it's so blurry man. The camera is not good. Yeah I run that all into the GoXLR. We'll get to that in a minute but everything else in here is mostly just for streaming. You know I've got my Valve Index controllers which I really like. These work with the uh the two base stations I have up here. So I've got one on this side connected up and I've got one right over there in the corner. And those provide a decent experience of VR tracking. I might get a third one for here just because it's kind of a little bit obscured by that monitor in the back, but we'll see if we end up needing it. Other than that, we've got the Arctis Pro Wireless headset, which I no longer use, believe it or not. I actually went back to wired. So I got myself some Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pros, and these are so much better than the Arctis Pro Wireless headset. I mean, obviously it lacks a lot of the features, like the Bluetooth and the, you know, this display with the Discord features and that. But a lot of that didn't work well anyway, so I'm kind of not losing much, and I really do prefer the sound of this. They're so much better, like, honestly. And the comfort is just way better than the heavy wireless ones. Um... Let's go to monitors now, I guess. So we've got the RL2455. I'm going to be replacing it. So I'm going to be putting this one here, which is the VG248Q, 165Hz, 1080p monitor. I'm going to be putting that there. I'm going to be getting a 1440p one for this instead. Hopefully you're getting rid of this because it got a bit scratched up during the move and I've really hated this monitor since I got it. Like it's really thick and heavy and it's like weighed down by the yeah, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. It doesn't look very good either. Yeah, uh, the two BenQ1s, GW2270s, I believe. Pretty straightforward. I want to get one of the uh, the new LG ones they announced, which is like a, uh, not 32 by 9, it's um, 16 by 18, I believe, aspect ratio. Really, like it really looks awesome. It would be so perfect for this setup because I could have my top PCs there and then bottom one there, just have the seamless mouse integration. It would be really cool. On two peripherals, so I've got the same PowerPlay mouse pad that charges the mouse, but the mouse itself 
I actually used to have the G703, but I moved over to the G Pro Wireless, not because I wanted to, but because the G703s kept failing on me. I actually went through two of them. I had to go through Logitech support. They sent me new ones and eventually those broke too. So I had to switch to something else. And I wanted to keep using the mouse pad, so I went for a G Pro Wireless. And honestly, really not worth the money. Do not pay twice as much for a mouse. This is not even as comfortable as the G703. And it really doesn't have any features that the G703 doesn't. It's just very light. It feels very cheap, but that's the idea, I guess. So if you're an esports player, maybe it's good for you. For me, no, nah, not worth it. I'm gonna go for something different next time. Anyway, stream decks, I need to redo the, the buttons a little bit. I've got some empty gaps there. My setup has changed so much that I've just not been able to keep track with all the shortcuts and stuff. I only really use this bottom row here for stuff at the moment. Occasionally I use like the refocus and all that. Not really, not really. The mixer is really handy though. I can switch between my scenes still. So if I'm playing Switch, I can do that or, you know, whatever I need to do. It works pretty well. Uh, keyboard is the same, Logitech G810. Wrist rest is kind of new, it's one of the Kensington ones. Really nice, really worth the upgrade. My old one was, yeah, old to say the least. Go XLR, it's still going. The best thing I own. I really like this thing, it's really cool. You can mix all your different channels, your music, your Discord, your game volume, your mic volume on the fly, like when you're streaming, being able to do this without having to click through a bunch of different menus, a bunch of different programs is really really handy and it's it's really cool being able to just like mute yourself to the call for other everyone else and just talk to the stream for a sec or you know do the opposite mute yourself for everywhere or whatever you want to do you can do lots with the software too yeah uh the mic i've got same mic the rode procaster with a ws1 windshield and a psa1 shock mount and a no psm1 shock mount and a psa1 mic arm just remember that. Uh, second stream deck, don't believe that's changed at all. Same setup as I had previously. This little box is new. It was really difficult to find something that did this, but it's so basic. All it is is it's one input, two outputs for 3.5 millimeter. So I can just press this and what it does is it switches between my VR headset and my normal headset. I don't have to actually have to go through cables and mess with it. Speaking of VR, this is the Vive Cosmos Elite headset, which I did a video on a while back. Really, uh, I don't want to say it's a really nice headset, but it, it does the job. It's pretty good and I've enjoyed it. I really wanted to try the Valve Index. People say it's a lot better, but unfortunately my audio solution using two cables here will not work on the Index. So I'm kind of screwed with that. And I think I'm just gonna have to keep holding on to that for a while until something new comes along. Maybe the Vive Pro would work, but you know, it doesn't look like it's that much better than what I've got now. So there we go. As for the PCs, so they're both over here now. We've had to get extensions and all sorts for the cables to get to displays. Really is a pain in the butt. Like try extending display port beyond two meters and see how well you go, especially with high refresh rate and G-Sync and all that having to work as well. Yeah, you have to spend a lot on cables because a lot of the cheap ones will not do the job. Anyway, I believe the only thing that's changed in this PC is the RAM. I got four sticks, so I'm up to 64 gigs now. Uh, nothing else is really new. Added wireless charging to this one right there. I've got a little dot to indicate where the actual charging pad is because I would have no clue otherwise. It would be so hard to line up. But yeah, um, really cool addition. A new addition to the old streaming PC. So this used to be in a old Corsair case, but when I moved the feet on it broke and since I didn't really like it anyway, I kind of just got a new case for it and got some Noctua fans to keep it quiet and there's no RGB in there so you can't really see anything. I just put it in a No11 dynamic case and all the hard drives have moved into the NAS now. So yeah, it's become quite a quiet system and all it has to do is run an RTMP server it runs OBS and a bit of Minecraft servers, so there you go. Now, before I miss them, here is the Nintendo Switch. I'm just hitting it down here because I don't actually take it out of the dock. I think this is a perfect spot for it, but if I really need to, I can pull it out and get it out of the dock if I want. Uh, I've got the 2DS XL. 
which I think is dead, so I'm not gonna bother trying to turn that on. Uh, Xbox One S, which I've modded with an SSD. It's got a, I think it's a 240 gig SSD in it now? No, 480 gig. And it does actually work quite a bit better with the SSD, but I'm still limited by the external hard drive back there. So when you open a game, half the time it won't even open, it will just say it took too long, so. I think that drive's on its way out. Anyway, um, what else, what else? We've got the Google Nest Hub over here. All this area is really messy, like the cables down there. That's where I charge my batteries and stuff. It's quite a mess, mainly because I don't have a bed yet. When I get my bed, I'm going to get some furniture for here, like a little shelf or something, so I can put my headset on it and some of my, you know, charging stuff, just to make it a little bit neater. This barrel is not, not at all big enough for the area. And I'm hoping as well, when I replace this monitor, because I'm gonna have this spare one laying around, I may end up just mounting it over here so I can just sit in bed and look this way and I could just watch TV or something on it. Well, not TV, but you know, YouTube or whatever people are into these days. Anyway, um, we got aircon installed recently about four weeks ago, I think, which has been amazing. It does get pretty warm in here, so it's good to have the option to turn that on if it gets pretty unbearable. Over here is the DDJ-200 Pioneer controller, which I use for virtual DJ and I just mess around sometimes when I'm into messing with music. I'm not really a music guy. Like I, I, I don't do anything professional. I'm just kind of learning and messing about in my personal time. So I didn't want anything proper. I just wanted to play around with it. So I got something basic like this and it's got Bluetooth so you can connect it to your phone if you want. But no, I just use it on the PC and if I'm bored, you know, mess around with a few songs on here. It's really good, really fun. Uh, next up is the Xbox shelf. This suits the space very well, but the controller holders are really just terrible. Like they slide and even the slightest tap will knock a controller off. And it's driven me insane. Trying to get one of these bottom controls off. You have to be so careful because if you knock this, they'll just go flying down there and it's not good. Other than that, it does have uh, some storage inside for your games if you're into that. Nothing too special. I'm sure you can get something custom made on eBay or whatever for a little bit more and get a much better looking thing, but yeah, yeah it works. Um, got the little Wi-Fi thing for the PC. Speakers are the same, Logitech Z623. What else is new? Got the key light, Elgato key light, main one there, just a standard one. On this uh, pole next to it is the it's the Logitech, not Logitech, it's the Elgato Master Mount, I believe is what it's called. And there's a little Kinect sensor, the Xbox One Kinect sensor. And what I use that for is depth sensing for VR. So I can do some VR, uh, Beat Saber VR stuff where I just put myself into the game rather than just capturing the headset. So yeah, it's really handy, but I need to get it kind of higher up if I want to use it. And then if I put it higher up, the angle's a bit weird, so I've got to mess with it a bunch before I use it again. It's really good for um, login though, because you can use it on Windows for facial recognition. So if you just lock the computer. So it supports Windows Hello, so if you're on your login screen like this, you can just stare right at it, right? And it unlocks your PC. Really cool, let me just show it again. If you're on your lock screen, you press a button, it goes looking for you, you look at it, and there we go, unlocked. Really, really cool. And it turns itself off. It's also a really cheap camera. I got it for like 30 bucks and I think 15 for the adapter for Windows. That's a killer deal. I mean, it was pre-owned, but still killer deal. And there's a lot you can do with it. Like you can do so much tracking things and all that if you want. Yeah, really cool. Um, last thing I think we've got is the Keylight Air, which is just a smaller version. I use that for when I'm working with computers or whatever, taking something apart. Good to have a portable light move around with you. Uh, the Secret Lab chair that I did an unboxing and setup of, I actually got the backrest replaced because it kind of ripped around here somewhere. You might be able to see it on one of my older streams. It was all ripped open on the side and it, it wasn't bad or anything. It was perfectly usable, but it was just kind of an aesthetic thing I wanted fixed. So I reached out to Secret Lab and they sent me a new one free of charge. They sent me a box to dispose of the old one with and they took that. Yeah, I think it was about two weeks I waited 
and it was all good. Didn't end up having to send my whole chair back or anything. It was just the backrest was sent to me and yeah, went pretty well. Um, I don't think there's anything else, to be honest. That's about it. But anyway, I hope you all have a good 2022. Hopefully a little bit better than 2021. And I shall see you next in a video other than this one or something. I don't know, guys. Have a good one. Goodbye.